All right. So welcome to uh, our Google Developer Relations office hours. Um, can I hang out? And what else can I say? Uh, I'm Les Vogel. This is Osama Alami. And Christian, whose last name I will not pronounce. <laughs> Simple. Quick skin. Yes. You think I have it by now. Uh, okay. And we just got joined by Chris. Um, Hello. Welcome. All right. So since Leon was here and he's got four questions. Um, ah, and Paul uh, Saxman and Joel, another name I'm not going to pronounce, has just arrived. Um, Let's see. So Leon's first question is about opening up a way to open source the iOS app. Um, Any update? Yeah, we're we're talking about it. Um, it's more likely, at least in the nearer term, that we'll we'll release parts of it. So I've been kind of recommending is that if you have a specific question, to kind of post it on Stack Overflow, and then we can potentially follow up with some code on Stack Overflow. Uh, longer term, we'd like to open source it. It's just a matter of kind of cleaning up the code and making sure it's um, usable. So there was a, I think I was kind of mistaken. There was an issue, I think, with, um, I think it was kind of old news with uh, iOS or Apple's um, restriction about open sourcing apps in the market, but I don't think that's an issue any longer. So um, I think they changed their license quite a while ago. Okay. So it's certainly doable. We're thinking about it working on it. Um, but yeah, in the near term, post a stack overflow. Okay. So. Yeah, it's just that, you know, from from Anymode's point of view, it's kind of complicated. It's going to take more than just a snippet of code <laughs> to get right. things going. So if, if there's anything you could release, it would have to be you know, at least something that is functional in terms of sending a code to the device. Mm -hmm. That would be the minimum. It doesn't need to have all the UI and you know, all the things that remote actually does. But um, yeah, there's just so much messaging and so much stuff about the protocol you need to get up and running um, that, um, I mean, it would be nice to get some feedback on Stack Overflow, but practically I think it's going to take more. Yeah. So did you, um, so I was kind of thinking that the uh, kind of the more complex part of it was the pairing protocol. Uh, would you agree with that? I mean, if we were going to prioritize Yes, I would say that's right. There's a lot of messaging. There's a lot of security stuff. Um, yes, that, that that would make sense, yes. Yeah. I was kind of surprised the first time I looked at the code that, you know, I was kind of expecting probably more of that to be inside of, uh, you know, a library. <laughs> mm -hmm. But there's, um, in the actual, um, you know, activities, there's a lot of work just to um, handle all those messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think getting the uh, the SSL encryption right is kind of complex as well. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take it back to the, kind of the product development team and kind of see see if we can get a little more traction on uh, getting that out there. So. Okay. Great. Thanks. We'll uh, we'll definitely post some updates. Okay. Let's see, uh, Chris, you had a question. No, I I don't really have a question. I. Uh, okay. I've been building stuff with the Samsung TV SDK, and I um, would like to port that application to uh, the Google TV device that I have, and so I, I'm just hanging out to learn more about it. But cool. I don't have a specific question. Okay, um, no problem. You're welcome to. Um, if it gets up to ten people, then I might ask you to drop off and join the uh, live broadcast. That's great. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I've not used Hangouts before, so if I if I need to do that, it's no problem. Yeah, but on the other hand, no problem. Okay, so I'll move so on. So Brian, please, can I jump in there? Sure. Um, so my understanding that Samsung apps are basically HTML um, apps, right? So Les posted a nice article on that on phone gap solution. So that looked like an option for him to look at, right? Actually, phone gap, and also um, if you're doing video, it uh, Will uh, there is a, uh, a video player that ties in with quite a uh, our earlier Google TV sample code, but 
phone gap uh, for a non-video app is very cool and very simple. And um, you know, we support many uh, of the iOS style um, extend uh, meta tags and other tags. Um, so yeah, yeah, take a look at under developers.google.com slash TV slash Android slash articles, I think. But developers.google.com slash TV, and you'll find articles. OK, great. Thank and you. And we've also just uh, published my stream. So I haven't published an awful lot in the last week. So if you just look at all my postings, it's there. OK. All Thanks. Right. Uh, Brian. Hi guys, I've got two questions. I'm wondering if you can turn the display off from an application. Wait. So like I want to turn off my TV and have it turn on at 6 o'clock every day or something. Oh, okay, you want an alarm clock. Yeah, that depends on uh, the OEM. And do we know? So right now, I mean, the problem is if it's running on something like the Blu-ray player or the review, mm -hmm. you would basically need to be able to send um, HDMI commands. There's like a CEC specification. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have exposed APIs for that. And even the internal support, as Les said, some OEMs implement it. So the Sony Blu-ray player, for example, can turn on and off the Sony TV. But if you connect a different TV to it, then it's already not going to work. Mm -hmm. And there is no developer APIs that are exposed for it. OK. Uh, my second question, I guess, is there any hope of getting an SDK for the Logitech uh, cameras that you can hook up to the reviews, or any camera API? That would be a question for Logitech. OK. Yeah. In terms of any APIs, um, so I, I'm still toying around with this. My, my original impression is that we didn't support anything, uh, or we didn't support, um, really support USB host mode. Mm -hmm. uh, but doing more testing, it, it looks like we do support it um, a little more uh, fully than I had thought. So it's potential. There's a possibility that you could actually write drivers using USB host mode to write drivers for a video camera in Java. Um, the issue with if it's rather complex to do that. Um, and you'd actually have to do like video processing in mm -hmm. Java, which is also really slow, or potentially would be really slow. Um, but you know, we're, we're kind of playing around with it a little more lately. So you know, we potentially have some updates on that. OK. But I mean, this is kind of also related to a question that um, uh, Leon had earlier about the serial devices. And it, it looks like their serial devices might be supported, actually, uh, via USB host node. So um, if you're following the thread on the, the Android, the ADK post that I put in, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can actually, uh, if the USB device is actually recognized by the USB host APIs, which all devices should be, um, then you can actually write your own um, kind of driver for it. So okay. the other thing you might consider doing is moving to a Wi-Fi or a um, Ethernet camera mm -hmm. that has uh, its own compression. Um, because if it has its own compression, then you don't have to do anything on the box. Right. Some of the newer boxes um, that will ship this year have enough horsepower to do compression mm -hmm. in the box. But uh, the review and the existing Sony's uh, don't really have enough juice. Okay. So. Uh, Thanks. Can I jump in there? Can I back, get back to sure. Paul about that serial interface? Um, I looked at the article you posted on Google Plus. Oh, about that serial interface. Then, uh, I looked at the article. Uh, let's see if I can ask uh, Matthew to turn down his speaker. Let's see if I can ask. Or his mic. Turn his micro. Mute his microphone. Cool. Thank you. Um, so I looked at that article that um, you posted on Google Plus, Paul, and my understanding is it still requires this library um, 
beyond the Java code, and the library, uh, as far as I could see, is, is going to be native code. Since we don't have a compiler for that, I couldn't see a way around that. At least the rest of the code is Java, yes, but it was relying on, on this intermediate thing to kind of put the USB in a kind of a serial-like mode. Um, that's how I read that article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there, there's two, I mean, there are actually two of those articles in there. And, um, one of them was actually doing that. It was compiling the FTDI serial drivers into the kernel. Yeah. And then the other one made it sound like it was a little bit different. Like you could actually set up the, uh, the protocol handling actually in Java itself. Um, I'm still toying around with it, but if, if you grab that code actually from the, the one in my post, if, if I posted the correct one, um, it should uh, be a, a native Java app, a native Android Java app. So Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, I, you know, I, I saw the two ways. The two ways was basically relying on a driver, which is obviously not practical unless right. you root the device. But the other one, I, I assumed that there was a native component, so I didn't actually go further than that. But I'll give the Java code a try mm -hmm. just to see if it's enough. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing with the Arduino because I'm trying to uh, communicate. It's the same FTDI. I think it's FTDI um, serial chip on the device. So I think that you were talking about potentially. Yes. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, let's see, we'll go to Chris. Uh, if I can find my uh, mouse without killing my video. Uh, or, excuse me, to Will. Okay. Um, you had a bunch. Yeah, I was one of my one of my questions was about uh, Google TV evolving in smart. Smart TV, like, uh, will Google TV eventually be able to tell what shows I've watched and make suggestions based on the shows? So, like, if I like, you know, if I'm watching Fringe, then it can recommend Alcatraz to me, something like that. Uh, there are some suggestions built into the TV and movies application, but there isn't uh, anything along the lines of what you described uh, that's exposed to developers. In terms of general product plans, we typically don't have comments on, on what we're planning, so I, I can't really add anything more. Okay. Um, can you talk about the future, like, uh, of a Google B Google TV being a part of an actual cable box that you get from a from a provider? I think this would be great. So basically, when you sign up for cable, you have a you have a Google TV box right there. That would be perfect. And then you know, with OnLive as a part of Google TV, they have a console basically there too. That's something I would love to see happen. I'd like to see what you, hear what you guys think about that. Well, it'd be great, but uh, again, we can't talk about what any of the OEMs are up to. Um, gotcha. Yeah, uh, I mean, we've announced new devices uh, at CES uh, from a number, number of OEMs, uh, but all the announcements were around uh, Buddy Boxes, Blu-ray players, and TVs. Okay. Um, the other one, I don't know if this is appropriate, but I have a I have a Google TV app. I won't say the name of it. Um, I have a I have a request list that's about super long right now, and I need some help. So if anybody's out there and they want to do some side work with Google TV, contact me on Google Plus because I need some help. Cool. Yeah, I think we're reviewing your app uh, this week. In fact. Uh, cool. I appreciate it. Yeah. I would love I would love to be in the featured area. All right. Uh, let's see. I, I know Leon has another one, and uh, I'm not tracking everybody's questions, so I'll, I'll go back to Leon, and then if you, uh, feel free to post to the chat window if you've got a question. Okay. Um, uh, I guess this is still related to some of these uh, accessory things. Um, so I've ordered an ADK, and I've also ordered an Arduino with uh, Ethernet. I'm just wondering, for the short term, would it be better for me to kind of concentrate on kind of networking type accessories until you know there's some good solution for physically attached accessories, or what do you think? Uh, 
Are you meaning for creating a product or for playing or? Uh well, basically, go adding accessories to Google TV because I want to be able to control devices. And since you know, it's still up in the air whether we can actually control an Arduino or get all the capabilities, um, at least in the short term. So I'm thinking maybe concentrating on a networking solution. You know, if there's another Arduino or other type device that you can talk to, would be a better short-term um, solution until there's kind of a real solution for talking to real accessories. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say, I mean, I think network over TCP or home network is actually probably the easiest way. Um, it's also the most expensive way, unfortunately, just because yeah. the, usually like the, the Ethernet shields are kind of like $30, $40 or something like that, or if you get the integrated uh, Ethernet Arduino. So it's a little more expensive, obviously. So um, I think it should be pretty straightforward. Um, I've never really played with the uh, the protocol, like uh, like doing um, TCP communication on a Arduino, but I'm sure there's lots of code for it. So um, I, I'd say it's a good, probably near term solution. So. What might make a um, good business, or at least a way to um, help your um, is to approach the manufacturers uh, of the devices you're interested in and say this is what you're doing and get them to, at the very least, contract or uh, do a trade for devices um, or a future sale or something like that. Yeah, the, the two devices I wanted to play with was, um, I think I mentioned the one before, was the, the light bulb, the Wi-Fi light bulb. Unfortunately, it's still not available. And the second one uh, is um, a Z-Wave controller, but it's USB-based, and Sorry. that's really the only option. Unless you do some terrible hacks with some of their remote controls, which I don't want to avoid. I want to make a plug-and-play solution for, you know, so that any consumer could use that. So. On both levels, um, it's things aren't quite ready. I would say from an accessory point of view. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was just a thought. Um, let's see. Will wanted to ask Matthew a question. Yeah, he he mentioned uh, simple TV in his comments on the in the in the. Uh, on Google Plus, and I don't know what that is, so I was just wondering what, what that is. Okay. Um, I'll ask Matthew. You want yeah. to answer, or? Yeah, sure. Yeah, my my, I was just getting, I was just typing that in the in the chat window. Um, I'm I'm sure this, the, these OEMs that are working on on future hardware will 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 likely build something into one of these devices, but. Uh, uh, Simple TV is coming out with something to stream off-air um, content into into uh, MPEG-4. I'm wondering if you guys are aware of any of any others that have that have come up with similar kinds of solutions that are out there to be able to to take advantage of that of that content that's available off uh, off-air at a at a very good price. Uh, everyone's shaking their heads. So I think that the, the answer is not a haven't really been looking at it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can't say that I'm familiar with it. All right, uh, who's got another question? All right, it's going to be a short day today. <laughs> ah, here we go. <laughs> Good timing. Okay, perfect timing, indeed. Do you want me to just state it? Yeah, might as well. Okay, so uh, I built a Samsung TV app, and I'd like to port it, as I mentioned. Um, Samsung has two types of apps. They have regular apps and ticker apps. Ticker apps are essentially apps that are overlaid on regular TV content, whereas normal apps are you know, taking up the entire screen. Um, so what I'd like to know is, I, I was just reviewing the PhoneGap document that you pointed out, and that looks great. I'm wondering if there's a way that I can take a PhoneGap app and overlay it on regular TV, if there's anything special I need to do 
or if I would need to look at building that as a regular Android application, as a Java-based application, or where I should look. Yeah, you definitely are going to have to do a um, Android app. The way that uh, so we've been kind of restricting talking about how to overlay, but that's what developers really want to do. So um, there are two ways we talk about it. One is if you send an intent to the um, using the um, uh, to change the channel, changing intent, and using the content provider. And then you can fire a second intent about a half second to a second later to your app to uh, come forward. And then the um, uh, activity that comes forward should have a uh, parent uh, background except where you want content. That has the drawback that the remote controls don't work and such. We recently found another way that none of us have tried, but Paul has an idea. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's Android has a feature called the um, system alert windows. And uh, system alert windows are a way to um, actually bring windows in front of other applications. Uh, the issue with it is, though, is that, I mean, these these tend to be annoying to users, so, and, and they're there all the time unless you actually programmatically close them, so, um, but if you want to look into it, uh, if you just Google search uh, system alert window with underscores in between, then you should be able to find some documentation on setting those up. Um, they're not very well documented even in Android, I think, just because they're, they're not, um, there is a uh, Stack Overflow article. Yeah, I think you'll find something in Stack Overflow as well. So, um, but yeah, system alert windows are another way just to bring uh, bring a uh, dialogue in front of running applications. So, uh, in addition, you probably won't have DPAD support, so that's fine for a ticker, um, but it's. Um, for apps that want interactivity, uh, it's going to be a little uh, difficult. Okay. okay. Not a problem for me. Thanks. Right. So, Les, in terms of that first option, uh, could you post some kind of code snippet on that one? Yeah. Well, that engineering probably won't want us to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, that's why I've never posted comments uh, on this, though I do talk about it in the Hangouts. Um, and I am posting the Hangouts. So, um, okay. But the, you know, part of it is that we are trying to let engineering figure out a um, standard way that makes sense for the user. Um, because if you have a lot of apps that um, um, do this, it's going to be a nightmare for the user. You know, I would, in my sense, that's the user's choice right. in that uh, you don't, the user's only going to use what they feel like they want and valuable apps they'll use and buy and other apps that they don't uh, um, you know, if it's annoying, they'll turn it off as long as there's an easy off on them, or they'll delete the app, yeah. or they'll rate it down. So let's see. Will has asked a couple questions about this because. Um, um, yeah, I was just. I think when I at first asked you on Stack Overflow about this issue, you basically said no, it wasn't possible. Um, you but I just want about the overlay. It's yeah. about the overlay. Overlay over live TV, and um, I just want to put my vote in to say that that is something that is a great promise for Google TV, in that you can enhance live TV, you can make comments on what's happening. Um, that's something that I hope that you guys really embrace because I think that a lot of cool apps can be made with that. Although what you say is true, 
if you start throwing things in front of live TV, it can be a horrible experience if you do it the wrong way. So I would just hope that you guys are trying to push that to happen because I think it opens up a lot of doors, and obviously people want to do it. So don't hold back. <laughs> yeah, no, we understand that. And, in fact, uh, that's the point is that we want innovation, but it's figuring out the right way to innovate, and um, we don't want to uh, create a situation where it turns off users. Yeah. So, yeah, w we do understand. That's, as I said, why I'm okay talking about it in a Hangout, but I don't want to talk about, you know, publish anything until engineering is happy. And for the record, Samsung TV supports it, and it was an awful experience getting it working. <laughs> so, you know, you can go two ways, right? You can release it in a bad way, or you can release it slowly in a good way. Um, how was it awful? It was just uh, programming or um, the experience for users? Uh, there's just, uh, there, there are processes you have to build something and push it into the emulator and test it there, and then you can push it up to the TV. The emulator only works on Windows, and basically the app worked on the emulator and did not work on the TV, and I could not figure out why for days, weeks. Um, so it, it just is a miserable experience. There's just a lot of things that are lacking in their documentation. It looks like it was written by an outsourced development firm. So it just was a miserable experience. Cool. Okay, well, that's actually a useful data point. Thanks. Sure. All right. Um, Who's next? I've got another one. Okay, cool. So it's kind of related uh, related to um, something somebody talked about earlier about being able to control devices from um, from within Google TV. But um, my question is broader than that. If you want to do anything that you can currently do over any mode, are there any plans on kind of exposing that as an API so that you could do something similar within an Android app? Uh, so can you ask one more time? Um, um, so you want so what exactly you're you trying to accomplish? Yeah, like remotely, if you could, I mean, through any mode, you can control other devices and do all kinds of things, even for Google itself as a system, right? Mm -hmm. What if you wanted to do that within your Android app running on Google TV? Oh, I see. Yeah, I think I think you guys. Um, Well, uh, you, you could. Um, I mean, you just have to actually implement the the client code on in your app, right? I mean, it, it would get really messy, though. I, I don't know how that would. <laughs> well, I mean, for example, by like controlling other devices, uh, currently I can only do that from my mobile app, right? I have to send the signal, and it gets trans, you know, translated somewhere within Google TV. I, I don't have that capability as an app, right? Right. So you want to do TV as a client. Or Google TV as a client to exactly yeah yeah um, so I mean you, you could you could pull the animal libraries in um, into an application and use it that way um, that that would probably be rather complex I mean I, I think right now your best bet would be to do do what makes sense um, just because I don't think we have anything in the near term plan for something like that. But, um, you know, we, we do have a protocol. I mean, if you have a, a dish, dish device, I mean, we have a pairing protocol between Google TV and dish devices that kind of works, I think, how you're saying. I mean, that's how the, the DVR commands are actually sent between uh, Google TV and the dish device. Um, that protocol is not open sourced um, or, or open. Um, not published on the web. So, I mean, we can look into seeing if that's publishable as well. Um, the only issue with that, though, is that the, um, the API developers, I mean, I think you'd be, you'd want your app to actually use the API on the device to communicate with the device. So it's, it's another layer of complexity. But, um, I mean, we get, we'll run it by our product development team. Well, um, his app, you know, goes remote control to right. the device, and then the device does whatever he wants it to. Right. But let, let's say controlling a DVR, for example. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, we can do that with dish devices because we we have pairing between Google TV and the dish device. Yeah. Um, but 
pairing between any app and any device, I think it's something that we don't have standardized yet. So um, I think it's kind of up to developers right now to kind of implement something to do that. But I mean, we can we can see about you know doing something that potentially doing something that would kind of make it a little easier. So okay, excellent. I could use. Let's see. Um, there are two things here. Uh, we have a question on uh, about the market TV. When you are done with the twist, okay, that's Chris Hollis. Um, I don't know if I'll add him to our app. So so regarding the market app, last week you said there's some work being done on it because I would say, you know, at least the feedback I'm getting from my users, that is a that is a big problem. Um, I mean, all kinds of weird things are going on. Apps are not getting installed. Apps are not getting updated. And it's um, even with a reboot, which seemed to have worked before, now doesn't seem to always work anymore. To get it back to a state where it, you know it can do the proper thing. Um, so is, is that part of this new software update, or is this going to be some kind of intermediate update just to fix the market? Um, the software update um, probably has some market fixes. Osama looked like he was going to... No, I, I just uh, wasn't clear what the, the issue is with market. Well, the issue with market, if, if I'm paraphrasing you, Leon, um, we know that when you purchase an app or want to download an app, it doesn't always come down immediately. Yes. Uh, about 10% of the time, it sort of the signal doesn't get back to the box to download. And I believe that there are fixes coming for that. Um, but I don't know how specific and whether it's 100% or not. Uh, yeah, it is, it is an issue that we're aware of, uh, or rather the market engineering team is aware of, and it is something that are, they're working on. Uh, I don't know if it's been fixed in an internal build or not or when it'll be pushed out. But it is something that they're actively working on. Is this something that can be done independently of a whole system update? Uh, an update to market? I. It may be. Don't know. I don't know. I think a market can be updated without a system, but uh, it's. Uh, At least it can on uh, phones. So, but I don't know all the details to make it happen. Yeah, and I don't know all the rules whether the OEMs have to be involved or not. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just it seems to come up daily that people get stuck in in that mode. It's really tricky and tricky trying to explain that it's not really the app that it's the market somehow. It's not it's not doing its thing. Yeah, and I'm sure that that doesn't help your ratings. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so w we do understand that it's an issue, um, and hopefully one of us will take it back. Yeah. OK. Um, all right. Let's see. I cannot find my cursor. Oh, here we are. All right. Let's see if that goes that way. It goes this way. <coughs> as soon as I can figure out how to start switching people again. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, we just had Brandon join us. Do you have a question? There we go. Um, well, I, I was hoping that the user experience guy was there. I'm not sure if he is. but uh, he was. Uh, we had two of them last week. Oh, you did? Yeah. Missed it. And uh, yeah, we had uh, almost uh, we had one UX question last week. Oh really? So what was um, well, I I basically um, a couple weeks ago I, I was wondering uh, if there was a I don't know best practices or whatever for interfacing key uh, presses like arrow arrows. On Google TV with the uh, render script, 
So I have a carousel render script, but it doesn't receive any input from the keyboard. I've asked someone to do some sample code for that. I haven't heard back if they started it. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so that's something we're, we're planning to release some sample code this quarter. Oh, OK. So hopefully this quarter, yeah. Um, Great. We all want to see that. And, uh, yeah, definitely render script with key presses uh, should be a win. OK, great. Okay. Thanks. Uh, anybody else? Another question? Leon? You usually have a bunch. No? OK. Um, Did you cover all the questions in your post? Um, I, I'll, I'll go through them. Um, let's see. Uh, Kevin uh, has written in on the um, asking about over-the-air recording devices. The answer depends on your idea of at a good price. There are devices on Amazon um, that take OTA antenna in, record to disk, and spit out HDMI. Cost seems to be about two hundred dollars. So. Um, Christian is explaining. I mean, we had one question on the MPEG-2 support. Um, and I think the issue there is that it's, it's not supported by all devices. Um, it is supported by, um, I believe, the TVs and Blu-ray disc players, but not by buddy boxes necessarily. So um, it, it's up to the OEM to actually license the license the the decoder, so yeah, I believe it's required support for the red winners. The quickest way I think to, to know, um, as far as I remember, is that uh, if you go to the Android documentations and look up the, um, I think it's in the supported media types documentation, not for TV but for Android, um, you can actually look at camera profiles, and camera profiles will tell you actually what. Um, what encoders are available, and that's actually queued at how many encoders are available. Um, I don't know how reliable that is on Google TV. I've never tested it, but I think it's a general strategy for um, for checking for encoders or decoders on a device. So and I can look that up, and I'll, uh, I'll follow up on the thread on the discussion. Um, here's one for either for one of us. I don't know the answer to this. Uh, Alexander asks um, about USB mounted drives. Google TV mounts them as uh, he writes SMTH, like USB dot ABCD dash one two three four. How can I get the real name of a flash drive? Google TV definitely knows it because the notifications I can see the uh, synced USB storage quote label. So one of us needs to look that up in the source code. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Probably best post it on Stack Overflow. Yeah, okay. if you post it on Stack Overflow, we'll look it up for you. Uh, use uh, hash Google dash TV. Okay. And Chris, we answered your question about uh, we mentioned PhoneGap, but also straight Android apps work well too. Um, okay. Uh, there are also besides this Hangout, there are Google TV product managers who hang out, and so for Roy. Um, they are the ones who you can ask about Gmail, YouTube, uh, movies, Google Maps, Google Earth, and Google Plus. Um, that's not our bailiwick. Um, and UI changes as well are um, in their area. 
That's not our mic. Bailiwick? I've never heard that before. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> not <laughs> trench shape. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Oh, someone else? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, sure. This is my partner developer asking it. Um, we're working with the uh, queryable uh, guide, the TV guide, and we're wondering if Google is going to have their own, if we can, it will be an app, like a built-in app in the, in the Google TV where it would be a guide rather than um, something that the, we would build to query and display. I'm not sure if that's clear. I'm not sure okay. if I can understand. Okay, the, the guides and channel listing is licensed material. Okay. So the TV and movies app has some of that information in it. Um, we are, uh, with the next release, we are going to be adding the TMS ID into the content listing provider. Okay. Uh, so if you were to license data from Tribune, um, you can take that TMS idea, ID and get a lot of information about the title, the um, pictures, descriptions, what you know, what episode it is, um, and more. I wonder if that's how Plex does all that information that it gathers. That sounds like it could be. I don't know. Uh, Plex does a really good job at like when you have a file that it recognizes as some show. It really does a really good job at like populating a description. Of, a picture of it. It's really cool. I can't tell you about Plex, but I suspect Buddy TV, that's how it works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so less in terms of that ID, are you saying it will just be an extra column in the current uh, content provider uh, listing? Yes. But I haven't actually looked at the new data, and I wasn't planning to write a, the, the documentation for it. Um, I was hoping someone else in the room might, but okay. uh, they're not speaking up, so uh, I'm not going to call them out. So, uh, so the ID, does it refer to just the channel, or are you saying that it actually sh tells you about the current show? Well, you get the row that ha for each um, channel, Yes. and it will be, as I understand it, and again, I have this is not the area that I looked in, and as I said, no one is speaking up. So, um, but it's supposed to have the TMS ID of the current show. Oh, okay. Well, that's really good news, actually. Yeah, um, and then with that, you can mm -hmm. license the data with Tribune and uh, work it out. Okay. Um, we have, we're not 100% sure it's the current show. Um, oh, okay. So... We'll get back to you on it. I mean, exactly okay. what it's going to Yeah, because that um, could be very interesting. I've done stuff like that before, but the ID would be a nice hook. Right. Yeah, we've had other developers and, and kind of partners ask about um, actually just knowing what uh, who the broadcast provider is, or who yeah. the so knowing that if you're on AT and T Uverse or if you're on Comcast, you know, San Francisco. Um, so that TMS ID we can share. Okay. Um, so other information about like the, the the channel lineup, the specific channel lineup, or well, actually that is the channel lineup. Um, but the uh, the programming guide, uh, we don't have information for it yet. Okay. So what's on or what's playing in the future is something that you'd have to derive from the uh, the channel lineup ID. So okay. right, and that also is not giving you what they're currently watching. Yeah. No, I understand. Because we don't necessarily know that because it's decoupled box. So you guys still working on a solution for that for the future? <laughs> um, which part of uh, I can't talk about <laughs> unannounced activities? Uh, sorry. It seems like if it was your regular cable box, it'd be right there, though. That'd be perfect. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we got that. <laughs> uh, that ain't my department. However, okay. Um, let's see. Reading through these, um, yeah, we talked about MPEG two already. 
We talked about MPEG-2. talked a lot about MPEG-2. Uh, okay, I think we've covered all these questions. I see one more thing in my feed uh, from Paul. Two more from Paul. Uh, Yeah, we agree with that one. Um, the problem with not joining in and uh, asking long questions is it's really hard for me to read it, figure out what's essential, and um, have all of you sitting there. Uh, so. Basically, Paul is asking, um, or made a comment about overlays, and uh, talking about Comcast Guide and TiVo Guide. Okay, uh, I don't actually see a question in here, but I invited Paul to the Hangout, so. Um, you're welcome to join the on air, and uh, we can tease that out. Okay. Um, any other questions? Well, last time, just a general question. This is something that I, I. What kind of questions are you looking for in the hangout? Because a lot of times, I feel like it's a technical hangout, and those kind of questions are better asked on somewhere like Stack Overflow. So I'm try, I try to ask a different, maybe, I asked a lot of marketing questions last week. But I guess my general question is, what kind of questions are you looking for? Or um, I, I, I think we are looking for technical questions uh, or, or discussion on any problems you're having, uh, developing for Google TV. Um, what our Hangout is not looking for is any you know, product questions uh, <laughs> about specific apps on the platform uh, or, you know, future plans for what, what the next version of the platform will look like. All right. Uh, so we are, we are a technical team, and uh, we're, we're here to support application developers. Uh, so anything that falls under that, that category, we're, we're happy to answer. That also okay. includes marketing, helping market your apps. Mm -hmm or monetize. So right. um, it crosses into the marketing business aspects um, if you want it to. Well, I have, a, I have a somewhat of a question about that. Right now, I have my app has two versions. It has a free version and a paid version. And I'm going to collapse them down into one and do what you said last week, which was uh, provide a, a, an add-on feature that's going to be the pay part of it. Yeah. It's going to be just eventually just one app. Um, but my guys who have already bought the paid one, um, I'm a little wor worried about them because they're they've already they're already on. I guess I still have to maintain two, but uh, um, that's kind of like my dilemma right now. Um, but it's already it's already the cat. There, my app is already out in the world right now, so I guess I'm stuck with two. But um, the next one will only be one. And it, and uh, your idea last week about having an add-on or in purchase, you know, offering it free. And add on that. I really took that to heart. I think that's a really smart way of doing it. Yeah, in-app purchasing is a real win. Um, the let's see, what you might consider is you can do the in-app purchasing uh, through your server. So if you were to release one. That um, ping like a um, app engine server <laughs> with the credentials. Of course, you'd have to ask the permission of your already purchased apps. Yeah. So basically, you do a, uh, your own license validation server. Right. And then your in-app purchasing can track. Um, 
rather than pass the in-app token only to the app, you pass the in-app token all the way to your server and authenticate. So basically, you release a version that captures credentials, you know, of course, with permission and explaining what you're doing. And then a week or two later, after you've had sufficient, everybody's upgraded, so it might be a month or two, you uh, go to uh, the in-app purchasing version, and um, you are validating credentials against uh, their email. So you're kind of breaking a little bit of the in-app purchasing, but you've got a um, um, a way to enable your app. Right. Make sense? Yep, it does. Okay. Uh, and the Android folks have um, content talking about server-enabled in-app purchasing. Uh, so, because that's where I got it. Gotcha. I'll check it out. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Chris is asking, is there a reason we cannot use PIP? A technical one or otherwise? PIP's, um, yeah, fundamentally, um, engineering didn't provide a public API for it. So, so I guess my question is more, it might be on the roadmap. It's not something that like OEMs are saying we never will allow that. It's, it's more of a just hasn't been attended to yet. Um, yeah, that might be a good way to characterize it. <laughs> okay. I, I can't tell you, that, I'm not confirming that it's on a roadmap. Right? Sure, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, I probably should have just not even asked the question, but anyway, thanks. No, I mean, the question... It's good to pester us with these kinds of things. I don't need pester, but basically, if you remind us over and over again, we can go to engineering and say, every Hangout we get told, this is an issue. Um, so kind of along those lines, though, I mean, it, it, it's really helpful for us if we hear kind of use cases in addition to kind of what your feature request is. Yeah. Um, because sometimes, I mean, pit mode's kind of an interesting one because a lot of developers want pit mode so they can embed video or have the impression that video is embedded in their application. Um, but that may be not be that may might not be the optimal solution. Um, you know, there could be other ways to actually get video into your app. So, um, so if you can kind of share with us kind of what what you'd like to accomplish from an applications developer, from a user uh, kind of your user experience standpoint, we can kind of distill that down to something that we can. Uh, kind of bring the product development team and kind of drive requirements for the product, so. Um, I mean, so the app that I built for the Samsung TV is essentially a app that allows you to get more collaborative around live sporting events. And so the ticker application, it essentially overlays um, a scoreboard of, you know, people are essentially using their phones to participate in kind of voting on matchups the specific sport is, is MMA or UFC mixed martial arts. And so the, the app allows you to go to your phone and choose the matchups that you like. And then from there, there's a scoreboard overlaid on the live TV such that when the, you know, the event is occurring, you're seeing the scoreboard updated in, in real time. And, um, and so for that, for that application, the Samsung ticker works really well because it just allows you to overlay on that. So PIP, I mean, I like to look for the simplest solution, and so I, you know, when I was looking at the documentation a few minutes ago, it looked like PIP might be an option, but um, right. I'm not attached to it. It sounds like the other option you suggested um, less is, is probably a better one, the, using an intent to launch the app. Um, well, the nice thing about using an intent is then you can focus on your sport, and you know what is up, especially if you license TMS data, you can get to the right channel, uh, you guide them, and when they want out of your app, they quit it, they have regular television again. And um, so it then becomes channel or sport focused. Because you, if it is not live TV, um, you might have other content that you take them to, a, a different kind of activity. 
So the, on the historical or future events. Right? So you can do more by making it an app. Right. Okay? Um, and that's my story and I'm sticking with it. Okay, so we're almost out of time. Um, I posted a link. If any of you are in Canada, um, I'm going to be uh, putting it. Paul Karth and I are going to be uh, doing a um, developer lab in Toronto on the 7th of March. Um, so feel free to sign up for that. And otherwise, Google runs on uh, the short meeting idea. So I'm going to end it here unless anyone's got something else to say. All right. That's all. Thank you. Aloha. Bye. Bye. Bye.